Cannondale has a brand new Scalpel XC race bike. This is a bike that has been around for many years now, racing between the tapes, flat out fast, and winning many podiums along the way. 2020, there's a new version of the bike, whole new frame, and an SE trail bike version too. Before I go into too many details though, yes, I'm in my spare room. I'm sure you're all used to it by now. The COVID-19 situation is still ongoing, so we're recording safe and sound from home. Now, please don't forget to like the video, drop any comments down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you do so, do click the little bell icon so that you get a notification every time we upload a new video. In 2020, when we were looking forward as to what might happen this year, we expected a lot of cross-country bikes to be released. 2020 is the year, oh no, it was the year of the Olympics. Obviously, that's not happening next year. But in an Olympic year, you often get a lot of new XC bikes ready to be showcased at the world's largest sporting event. And the Scalpel is one of the first to be announced this year. Now, all might not be lost for those lovers of cross-country bikes though, because even though racing this year hasn't happened, with current restrictions around the world, many people are riding from home. So if you haven't got access to your local big hill and steep tracks, maybe a cross-country bike is the new bike for you. I know that I've been riding a lot of XC road and gravel, so actually, this is the kind of bike that really appeals to me at the moment. So as you might have noticed, this is a brand new frame for 2021. So we're gonna go into all the details about the bike, and then I'm gonna tell you about the SE trail bike version of the Scalpel as well. That's just waiting on my landing outside of my spare room. Okay, so there are two major changes with the new frame from Cannondale. Now the first one, on the last generation Scalpel that came out in 2017, there was flexible seat stays. On this version, it's the chain stays that are flexible now. So you can see here is the chain stays and you can see there's visible slimming just before the rear dropout. So this area flexes um, in lieu of having a pivot around here somewhere. This Cannondale say makes the bike feel more like a four bar suspension system, or I mean, they even say it is a four bar suspension system. They say that this little flexi bit is nice and stiff and is a lot lighter and obviously more durable than any pivot based system out there, which is why they've gone for this flexible section down here on the chainstay. The other change is that along here, the previous generation had a drop link that came down to the lower shock mount. Uh, and now we've got a much shorter little wishbone, which I reckon is probably gonna be a little bit lighter and also potentially a little bit stiffer too. In terms of weight, Cannondale say that this is a 1.9 kilo frame with all the hardware. They don't say what size that is. What they do say is that it is lighter than real world weights from the likes of Specialized with the Epic, uh, Trek with the Top Fuel, and Scott with the Spark, you know, the top end versions of the bike. So they're claiming big things from this high mod version of the bike. Geometry wise, there's nothing particularly radical about this new scalpel but it is pretty up to date for a cross country bike. Compared to the old version, this generation has a one and a half degree slacker head angle and a one degree steeper seat angle. And you know, if you've got a, a vague idea of what geometry means, you know, that'll probably be a good thing. Um, also, the reach has been increased. Now I will go through a geometry chart later on, but that's sort of some of the main changes for this frame in terms of its shape. Now, one of the things that Cannondale is really well known for is their suspension forks. Prior to 2018, they were running the Lefty, which was a dual crown fork, single-legged as well. But then they bought out the Ocho, which is a, a single-legged, single crown fork, and it's fairly unique. Now, they make obviously a lot of great claims about the Ocho, but some of the changes include going from um, four roller bearings uh, between the upper and the lower stanchion down to three, which say, say reduces friction and reduces weight. In terms of weight, it comes in a claimed 1,446 grams for the 100 mil version, which puts it about 100 grams heavier than the equivalent forks from Rockshox and Fox. 
However, they do make some fairly bold claims about the lower friction levels within this fork, which makes it smoother in theory. Interestingly, most cross-country bikes claim, you know, stiffer this, faster that. What Cannondale have done with the Ocho is actually make it a touch more flexible than the previous generation Lefty. And that's because when you're going through rock gardens or off camber sections, a little bit of torsional twist can be a good thing to kind of boost grip levels and comfort and stop it from pinging off everything. Now, the other kind of interesting thing about the Ocho is to do with the fork offset and the trail. So quite in-depth geometry stuff. Basically, most forks have a shorter offset and this gives a longer trail figure. This generally makes bikes a little bit more calm, um, especially in steep stuff or when you're going really fast. Now, what Cannondale have done is kind of the opposite. They've given the fork a longer offset, giving a shorter trail figure. And I think the reason they've done this is because they've made the head angle relatively slack at 68 degrees for an XC bike, they didn't want the bike to feel too lazy on a cross-country course, where actually you want fairly nippy handling. So they've given that longer offset to give a shorter trail, which makes the handling a little bit snappier again. At the same time, though, having that slacker head angle puts the front wheel further forward of the handlebars than it would be, which makes things a little bit more secure on steeper terrains. Now, one of the other things that Cannondale have done with the suspension on the bike is, if you take a smaller frame, on average, that rider is gonna be slightly lighter than someone who rides an extra large frame, for example. So to make sure that the suspension works properly for all the different riders, the layout of the suspension is slightly tweaked for each different frame size. And that's not something that many brands are doing, but it's something probably worth thinking about. That means things like leverage curves, anti-rise, anti-squat and all that is slightly different between the models. And obviously Cannondale say that that's better tuned for different riders of different weights and thus different heights. Finishing off sort of the basic frame details, I guess, of the bike, you get all the usual things. You've got the internal cable routing, as you'd expect, uh, and also this little stash system. So I don't have this fitted to the bike, but basically um, underneath the bottle cage bosses, you can add things like um, multi-tool brackets, uh, tire plugs, that sort of thing. So as mentioned, uh, I was gonna tell you a little bit about the geometry of the new scalpel. It's not revolutionary, but it is pretty up to date for a cross country race bike. So you've got a reach of 455 millimeters on a size large, comes with a 68 degree head angle, a 74.5 degree seat angle. The chain stays at the back are 436 millimeters long, and this gives a 1,180 millimeter wheelbase on a size large. And that's with the 55 mil offset fork at the front, which gives you 90 millimeters of trail. Finally, I measured the BB height at 325 mil. This is the top spec high mod version of the bike. And as you'd expect, it comes dripping with some really nice kit. Obviously it's got the Ocho up front and it's got a factory level float rear shock and they're both remote lockout versions. You get Cannondale's carbon wheels, uh, that's their hologram kit. Uh, an XTR drivetrain with a hologram chain set as well. Envy finishing kit, it's all pretty spanky stuff. So this size large high mod top end one with carbon wheels, XTR, etc. Comes in at 9.9 .9 kilos on the nose. I literally just measured it this second. So that's fairly light really for a full suspension XC race bike. Now, I don't have full pricing for the range of bikes. I think it comes in at just under £7,000, which is a lot of money, but it's not in the sort of the 10 grand thing that we've seen from a few bike brands out there for their top spec bikes. However, it goes down to a SRAM NX Eagle 12 speed build with a Fox Rhythm 32 fork. Um, so that should be significantly cheaper than this XTR super spanky one. Full pricing is in the associated article on bikeradar.com and there is a link to that in the description. Now, as I mentioned, they also do an SE version of the scalpel. 
Now this is a slightly radder kind of cross country race bike and we've seen a few other bikes like this from other brands, um, you know, Specialized Epic Evo for example. Now the idea is that you get slightly more travel, slightly burly components and they're designed for kind of fast trail riding and to be honest also marathon racing too. The bike shares the same frame as a regular scalpel. It also has the same eye to eye length for the shock but the stroke length is a bit bigger and that gives 120 millimeters of travel at the back and you get a 120 mil fork up front. And they're using the new SID fork on this bike. Um, it's the one with 35 mm stanchions, so it's a bit burlier, but also pretty light and fairly rad. It's a pretty cool fork that I'm quite excited to go and ride actually. With that longer fork up front, but the same eye to eye at the back, it obviously jacks up the front end. What that means is that you get a 67 degree head angle and a 74 degree seat angle. Uh, and the reach is, I think, about five millimeters shorter for a given size. What you'll find is that you get, you know, slightly tougher, but still fairly fast rolling tire. So that's a, an Arden at the front and you get a recon race at the back. The other feature that you might have noticed is uh, a dropper post on there. So that's pretty good for getting the saddle out of the way if you're gonna hit some slightly steeper terrain. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are two models of this bike and this is a slightly cheaper one. So you get a regular SID Select fork with a Select Plus SID Lux rear shock. And it comes with a largely SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain and non-series Shimano brakes. It also comes with a pair of Stan's Crest rims for their wheel set. Now the higher end model gets full Select Plus level suspension, so that's the Sid Lux shock and the Sid fork at the front. It gets a Shimano XT drivetrain, you get slightly burlier, more powerful brakes as well, and you get a carbon wheel set with their hologram rims. Again, those slightly burlier tires. Now, one thing I did notice on the SE and the normal one is that you get a 34 tooth chain ring. I think on the SE, you know, it's a bit more trail orientated, so I, I feel like a, a 32 might be a little bit more apt. You might want to have some strong legs for this one if you're going to do some big hills. So this is the new Cannondale Scalpel. They're between the tapes XC race bike. 100 mil of travel at the front, 100 mil at the back. And don't forget the SE version with 120 and 120. So have they gone too far down their own way as some people think they usually do or is this bike the most mainstream Cannondale yet? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you get a notification every time we upload a new video.